Hey YouTube, Ken here from Think Trade Profit. In this video, I want to share with you all the features and functionality of the free version of TraderView so you can improve your performance. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you need to do is, uh, and there's a link in the description below, but go to TraderView.com, TraderView.com, and pull up the website and register. Get a username, get an account, put in your email. So I'm at the website and make a note, uh, SMB Capital, they're a proprietary trader for, trading firm uh, on Wall Street. They are one of the best of the past decade. They use this, that's what turned me on to it. Their traders use this, uh, they re do reports daily, but it's used by prop traders um, and professional traders all around. But sign up, get your free um, account and I'm going to talk a little bit about the four main areas. So the four main areas that we're going to focus on are the journal view, trades view, which is a list of trades, very filterable and configurable by date and tag and symbol and all kinds of things. Reports view, there's a ton of detailed reports in here so you can figure out uh, how to improve your performance, make adjustments, stop doing uh, certain things that are costing you money. And lastly, there's a something called shared up here in the shared link. This is a community. So once you sign up, if you choose to, you can share your trades in this TraderView community. Um, it's pretty interesting. I don't really participate in this so much anymore. I did chat with a couple of traders. I'd put like a note on their trade, hey, great trade, or what caused you to do that. But uh, some of the traders at SMB Capital, these pros and other trading firms, they share their trades on here. So it's pretty interesting. Um, this guy here, Benno, you can tell just by his in-depth analysis but this is how hard these guys work on creating playbook trades for themselves and that kind of thing. They put a lot of detail in here and they're actually required to kind of do a daily report. I, I've read a couple of their books about what's required of them. They do a ton of work, but it's really interesting to have access to this. And you can share your trades too. Notice he doesn't share his share size. So if you're only trading small, don't worry about it. There's a way to configure this where you just share the symbol, whether you bought or sold and at what price and these charts are configurable by you too. But pretty interesting, so you've got that resource there available too if you wanna participate in the community or just kinda of look around and see what other people are doing. So journal view, trades view, reports view, and the community, that's what we're gonna focus on. So let's go to the journal view. You can create a template for yourself and what that'll do is every day you can create a new journal for the day and it will fill that journal with whatever you have templated. I have something that I built up over time, over the past six months, of things I'm working on, and that's what's in here, and I'll show you that in a second. You've probably seen it in some of the other videos as well. But this is what happens when I create a new journal, it populates it with this template, and then I added some things in here. I don't really use the trade notes template so much anymore, but I threw these in here for this video. And basically what I'm talking about here is, was I with the VWAP or with the trend or with the SPY? You can put whatever is important to you in there, but those uh, that template will go in every trade that you have. So that'll be available in the trade notes and then you could fill that in. Maybe that's something you wanna keep track of in a, in a written way. So uh, journal notes and trade notes templates. So to create a new journal, you just go to journal view, go create new journal entry here. And there's a calendar right behind this drop down, so you can pick today, which I've already done. I pick today, I click this, and I hit create, and it created this journal that you see right here. Uh, this is my templated stuff. I know there's a lot there. I'll kind of breeze through it. A lot of it's personal. It's stuff I'm working on and I want to do better. I usually do this before the trading day. I do this first thing in the morning. And what it does is I kind of read through some of the stuff and, and this is where I put like reminders, put me in the right mindset for the trading day before it starts. So that's how I do it. There's no trades associated with this yet. And there's no pictures in here either. With the paid version of TraderView, you can upload uh, pictures and documents like you've seen me do maybe in some of the previous videos. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process of importing trades so you can see them connected to the TraderView journal. So importing trades is really easy. You go to import trades and I already have the selection for Fidelity. I use Fidelity and a lot of, a lot of people uh, in our uh, community channel uh, use Fidelity, but there's a ton of brokers supported. I mean, there's a bunch, um, but let's go back to Fidelity. And the way you do this is you go to the web. You wanna go to the Fidelity web app and go to activity and orders, activity and orders. Select the account that you're gonna pull the activity from. Go to the time period dropdown. For me, I do this daily. Um, if you haven't ever imported any before and you just wanna throw 100 trades in there, then you can set whatever uh, setting you want. But I'm gonna choose today and 
the front and two make them the same. So these are the trades so far for 924 today. And there's an ordering thing. It's actually in the instructions in TraderView import page. It has the import instructions for whichever broker you're doing once you select it right here. And there's a help page uh, on the side. But it, it prefers them. It's neater and cleaner if you sort them in the order that you traded them in. So you can check this out by following the instructions. Mine, I just flipped this upside down and it's got PayPal first. You bought and sold it. And you can kind of verify it in your order screen here. And I know that I traded PayPal first. So that's the right order. And just hit download. And it gives me uh, this file. So that's what TraderView wants. So we're going to go and we're going to go choose that file. And that's this one. And hit upload. And it only takes a second. It says your import is queued for processing. It may, you might want to hit refresh once, and then it's done. Your import is completed. 39 trade executions were imported, and here they are. So, um, oh, I did two days worth there. That's going to duplicate some things. Oh, I'm sorry. The filters are set up differently. Let's look at this a little bit differently. And we'll take that tag off. I had it filtered. Okay, there's the trades for today. So today's date, I didn't specify by symbol and it listed everything. I didn't really crush it this morning. I was actually down to begin with. So these are the imported trades and that's how you import them in. So one thing I'm gonna do really quickly, um, Fidelity and a couple of the other brokers, they don't pass the times in with the trades. They're literally not recorded in the Fidelity backend. If you drill down into some of these trades here, the times aren't there for when you bought and sold and they're not passed to TraderView. And unfor unfortunately, um, it requires a little bit of work on my part or your part if you want those in there. I do. I take the time at the end of my trading day to put the times in because it's valuable information for me as a scalper where I'm in trades for minutes. Um, it's just valuable. I can see how long I was in losers and winners down to minutes and seconds. So I'm going to do that really quick. But the way you do it is you pop open an individual execution or the, an individual trade, you go into the executions with advanced, and then I can edit this and I can change. They're all passed with 12 o'clock, and this is in the help article um, in TraderView. And I put in the accurate times, and I get those from the order screen over here. So you can drill down in here, and you can put time, you know, up to the minute and second, and I do it. It's a little bit of work. Fidelity isn't the only broker that doesn't pass stuff. I know for a fact because it says it in there that Schwab doesn't do it either. But I like this data. So I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to update those trades with the times. And then I'm going to show you in the trades view and in the journal view um, how powerful that data is. So I'll be right back. All right. So back to it. I entered all the time data in for each execution. It's very valuable. Again. Um, you grab the times from here. One thing to note, these times are only available that same day. So tomorrow, there's no way to get these times from Active Trader Pro any longer, and they're not recorded in Fidelity's backend. So that's why I do it each day. So I entered the times in, um, as I showed you, and I also entered some tags. I don't use a lot of different tags. I just use uh, tagging to differentiate time of day. So I have a pre-10 a.m., morning, afternoon, and lunch. Uh, and it's only halfway through the day. I didn't uh, haven't traded the afternoon yet, but that's how I tag my trades. So you can filter it. You can say, well, how are the morning trades? And you can use that as a filter as well up here. Um, one way you might want to use this is to um, you know label trades like the type of trade, breakouts or trend trades or what have you. So there's a lot of ways to use tags. So you can filter it this way. Here's my morning trades um, and how well they did that kind of thing. So um, when you jump into reports view, let's look at the detailed report and I have this filtered by the morning trades, but um, let's take a look at this. So this is where the time becomes really powerful. I like knowing what my average hold time was, my average hold time for losers, uh, max, maximum consecutive losses, maximum consecutive wins um, is very cool. This uh, average position MAE, I've talked about these before, maximum adverse excursion. If you look at the trades individually, so we'll go to trades view, that is how much a trade went against me. And I know I had one bad average in here. Let's sort by that. 
and you can see this PDD, this is the stock that gave me a lot of trouble today, PDD. Um, I averaged into a 300 share trade basically and that's why the MAE is so bad. If you go into the detail, you can see I was shorting it. It was still on an up run. I ended up making money, but we'll come back to that. It's going to show up in my journal too. Um, it, you know, it, it was a profitable trade, but was it really a good trade? Was the risk, risk reward really um, good? Was it well handled? I don't think so. Uh, I may have broken a couple of my rules there. Um, averaging is pretty rare, but I want to look at my daily stop too. So, anyways, um, reports view is there's so much um, when you look at this. There's stuff like um, you know performance by hour, uh, by day of week. You know, as your stats grow, you can see all kinds of things by duration of trade. There's a ton of reports up here. That's why you should go ahead, take advantage of the free version, and play around and look around and see if see what's going to work for you. But what I do, what I want to do now is go look at the journal view again. And now that we've put the trades in, you can see the notes are in the trades now, and these are tied to this journal. So I'm looking at this this journal that we generated today and now the trades are tied to the journal. So you can see them in the journal view as well. And the price MA is here, the notes show too. We didn't go into that, but um, if you go into edit notes, this is where you can say this was you know, against VWAP or against the trend or whatever it is that you want to kind of record about your trades individually, that's where you do this here. I don't do much of that anymore. I treat all my trades kind of equally. I'm not really tied up in any one scalp. Um, but if you're a swing trader or a little bit longer term trader, it makes sense. Put as many notes as you can so that you can figure out what's working for you. So anyway, back to journal view. Uh, let's see how I did as far as um, I thought I had some drawdown in here that was worse. But you can see that I have a lot of this stuff templated and this is where I go and I edit my journal and I can start cleaning it up and I can answer these questions. Did I exceed my drawdown? Did I start after 9.50 a.m.? That's just something uh, about me. Did I not short, uh, short or buy the higher or low of the day? Were my losses, you know, did I have any losses greater than 40 cents? Uh, I know I did already or I had something go against me at least 40 cents. Um, and there's a bunch of other things in here too. But this is where you clean this up and put your trade size and that kind of thing. I think I traded 300 shares was my maximum say, trade size today. But this is where you kind of go over your things. You can talk about good trades, mistakes, uh, your worst negative PL drawdown, any losses greater than 40 cents, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have a journal and you can go back and you can look at them historically. Um, you know, as you filter, you can look. I have journals going back days. I like the PL graph. That's another reason why I like putting in the times. I think it's cool. You can see how you were doing throughout the day. So, with that, that's pretty much it. So, just remember uh, even in the free version, you're going to have access to all of this stuff. The only thing you won't have is that price uh, MAE, MFE with the times. But you will have access to everything else the community, the journal view, the trades view, and all this data. Everything is exportable to an Excel spreadsheet. So I did this a while back. Um, even if there wasn't a report in trader view that you wanted to, that was, that was available for exactly what you want to do, you can download this to Excel and you can massage it that way. I've done that a couple times. After I had about 400 trades, I went through and I said, okay, what if I took away you know, what's my, my best stop loss and that kind of thing. So I started looking at, um, I sorted all the trades by, you know, how much they went against me and if I had a firm stop loss for so much, how would I have done PL wise and that kind of thing. So everything is exported to Excel as well. So you can even massage it even more. If there isn't something in TraderView that, that gives you what you want, download it and play with it that way. That is really it. That is Trader View, and it's really powerful. It's been really worth it. It's a lot of fun to review your trades, especially when you're doing well. You've got a clear record of what you're doing well. You know what a good day looks like, and likewise, you can fix your mistakes. It's really, really powerful. I've reviewed pretty much every free or paid for kind of trade journal log out there, and I know the UI is a little bit antiquated looking, but the power in the reports is really where it's at. Um, once you get a huge collection of trades, you're going to really be able to dig down and, and, and look at what you're doing well and what you're not. So with that, I'm going to leave it to you guys to take a look and see for yourself. As always, support the channel. Subscribe if you're new here, please. Hit the like button so this video will be shared with other people. Um, 
but as always I wish you the best of luck um, tough markets especially the last couple of days uh, I've been a lot more conservative and just trying to to stay positive um, you know play good defense as I always say and live to fight another day but thank you so much for sticking with me I hope this is helpful and I will see you guys next time take care